Hello there, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing the 2021, this is day trades, this is equity trades, the trades in the live trading room for the Stock Swoosh Show live trading room from January through the end of May. So first five months of the year, good start to the year. This is an advanced trader tracking, which means a risk of average risk of $2,500 a trade. Results, again, trades called entry, exit in the room, 277704 So this has been a good year this year. And the market, to be honest with you, has had some volatility. And I think we're going to see some good trading in the summer, even though sometimes people say summer is slow. Uh, not for what I do, not for gaps. Again, that is my main focus. Every single trade that I call in the room is based on my gap strategy. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at the stock .com. You can call me at 929-3200 GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So earnings season is a great time to trade. There's four quarterly earnings seasons during the year, and that's when companies report their earnings. Most times companies gap when they have earnings. Now it doesn't mean that it's always a good gap, okay? It doesn't mean it's a qualified gap, but it's gonna rate per my system. But it's certainly something to watch and certainly something that I rate. So you know, in between the four quarterly earnings seasons, we still have gaps. Stocks can gap on news. They can gap on, you know, sector. They could gap with the market. It could gap for an upgrade, a downgrade. Many different reasons. But I will say that the four quarterly earnings seasons are the most uh, profitable times to trade. And so the next earnings season starts July, okay? So we're getting into this coming week is June 1st. So since the beginning of the year, this is, gosh, January seems like a long time ago now. Uh, the year started off January 4th. BA worked. It was a nice profit. Fifth, buy was a loser. Six, two losers in Facebook. It just didn't work out. BYND and Apple were winners. Seventh, BYND, one winner, one loser. That's called a retake. Then on the 8th, BA was a good one, and CCL. Again, these stocks, it's so interesting. Some of these we've done so much during the pandemic. Then on the 11th, bunch of trades on that day. Uh, it's interesting because usually the best days I ever have, it's usually just one trade and one ticker symbol. But Twitter lost, Facebook lost, Boeing lost, and then another Twitter and Facebook on that day. Boeing was break even, Facebook worked, and Apple. Then on the 12th, Netflix was a nice one, and CCL again. 13th was BA winner, Twitter winner, Wells Fargo winner, big winner on the 15th, close on the 18th, Twitter was a winner on the 19th, Netflix one loser and one winner. UAL was a winner on the 21st. Again, in January, then you had earning season. So the 22nd was IBM, that's always a nice stock to trade, but <clears throat> always has big moves. Apple, everybody loves, one on the 25th. Verizon was a baby winner on the 26th. 27th was Boeing and the Spy, good ones. 28th, no trades. Sometimes if I get up in the morning and I rate a gap and it doesn't rate per my system, then I don't do anything. That, that can occur. 29th, Spy lost, Facebook won. No trades on the 1st of February. Then on the 2nd, UPS lost, Spy won. Q's one winner, one loser on the 3rd. QCOM won on the 4th. Spy, two trades, one break even, one loser. QCOM lost and another break even. Diamonds worked on the 8th. IBM lost and Apple lost on the 9th. 10th was ACAM and Twitter. Two losers and then a big winner in the Twitter. Sometimes there's late trades. That's not preferable. I prefer to do trades right out of the gate early in the morning. The 11th was the SPY. Lost and save was a winner. Disney, loser on the 12th. IBM loser. Twitter was a big winner. Closed on the 15th, Twitter won on the 16th, no trades on the 17th, Walmart worked. 18th, Twitter on the 19th worked. 22nd, Boeing lost, Walmart was a good one. 23rd, no trades. So that was, well, here's the end of February. 24th, Spy, one loser, one winner. Again, another retake, Twitter lost and Disney won. 25th was BBY lost, Twitter two losers and DPZ won. Foot Locker was a winner on the 26th. Spy was a winner on March 1st to start out March. DDD was a good one on the 2nd. Ross won on the 3rd. And two trades in the Spy on the 4th. One loser, one winner. 
Fifth was GPS loss, Facebook loss, and another loser on GPS. That just did not work out that day. Eighth lost on Facebook, one in Apple. Stitch fix was a good one on the ninth. Spy lost on the 10th and another stitch fix. Sometimes it's a follow through continuation gap. March 11th was Oracle one, and then again on the 12th, Oracle. Lily was on the 15th worked. Spy was on the 16th worked, and no trades on the 17th. Then Apple was a big one on the 18th. 19th was Nike, worked. 22nd, no trades. 23rd, two losers in Wells Fargo. Apple lost Boeing, a big one. We've done Boeing a lot in the last 18 months, I'd say. That was on the 23rd. 24th, GIS one. Q's lost, Netflix one, and Apple one. 25th was Spy, two again, one loser, one winner. 26th, Facebook lost, Apple won, and JPM was a winner on the 29th. I will do bearish gaps and I will do bullish gaps, but I prefer bearish gaps. So I teach the bullish gap, gap course, but the bearish gap course I teach more often because I do prefer to short. So most of the trades in the trading room are shorts, just so you know. But I'll, I'll do a gap if a rate's good no matter what. I'll do the highest rated gap, but I really, really prefer shorting. <coughs> particularly because in the day trades, I like to be in and out fast. And that's the nice thing. March 30th was Apple one. Lulu was the winner on the 31st, off then in the beginning of April. No trades on the 12th. Fast was a loser. Apple winner, spy winner on the 13th. BBBY was break even on the 14th. 15th C lost, Apple one. And the 16th was MS lost, MBA one. No trades on the 19th. IBM worked on the 20th. Netflix then, one loser, one winner on the 21st. LVS lost on the 22nd. Netflix won. 23rd was INTC. That worked. No trades on the 26th. And UPS was a beautiful winner on April 27th. Again, some of these stocks just seem to always go in our favor, which is really, really nice. Um, Save was a loser on the 28th. Starbucks was a, was a winner and Microsoft a winner eBay was a winner. 30th was Twitter. Two again, needed a retake. One loser, one winner. Sometimes that happens. Twitter worked again then to start out May. May's been a good month. Microsoft was a winner on the 4th. Microsoft, we've done a bunch in May too. Uh, and they were shorts. May 5th, no trains. May 6th, Spy lost, Uber lost, Netflix lost, and Etsy worked. May 7th, BYND just did not work for the one, two, three trades. Then it worked. That was a crazy one. And Shaq worked that day. Uh, May 10th was the Q's. Nice quick one there. May 11th, Q's lost, Microsoft lost, Apple lost, Boeing lost, Spy lost, BA break even, and then a winner in the Spy. Microsoft lost first trade, second trade worked, and the Spy worked big one on the 12th. Then on the 13th, two trades in BABA that lost, Target, big one, and that was a long, actually, on the 13th. And then on May 14th, Disney was a winner, Microsoft winner on the 17th, May 18th, T was a winner. 19th, SPY loss and Q's loss, AA worked and SPY break even. May 20th, Cisco loss, KSS worked, no trades on the 21st, BYND nice winner on the 24th. 25th, Apple loss, Shaq loss, twice. DY was a big one then um, on that particular day. And one of the reasons that was a big trade was it had a small stop. JWM was a winner on the 26th. DLTR was a nice winner on the 27th. And HPQ was a nice winner on the 28th. So again, going over the advanced trader risk, it's $2,500 a trade. Some trades had ads. That's an advanced concept that I teach in the advanced entries class. But the bottom line is that you should have your risk the same or equal to the same no matter what your risk is. If you want to risk a beginner risk, fine. You want to risk $100 a trade or $500 a trade, fine. Your risk should be based on the size of your cash account. And again, these trades are on margin. You have to have a margin account set up at a prop broker or retail broker to do these as day trades. These are not options. These are day trades. We're in, out, and we're in and out fast and quick. And so the risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. And again, I call the stops in the room. I use stops or limit order stops. So if it hits the stop, again, you're out. Um, and again, this is just a chart here of the QQQs of the market. Just to go over again, what I teach in the class and what we do in the room is only based on gaps. So I'm just going to go over here briefly what a gap is. And again, this was the QQQs. Back here was the end of April where the market gapped down. It closed here, gapped down, fell. Okay, 
So this closed at one price at four o'clock and opened at a different price at 9.30 in the morning the next day. That's a gap. This is a gap down. You also have gap ups. Here's a gap up. Market closed at four o'clock, open here up the next day at 9.30. This is a gap up. So again, I'll do gap ups and gap downs, but I rate the gap. So I would rate this as a bearish gap and I would rate this as a bullish gap. And this is a bearish gap too. This was a bearish gap that happened here too, okay? I rank gaps in the morning, could be the market, could be individual stocks like you saw that we train. And then I determine if they rate per my 26 point rating system. If it rates 20 points or more, then I'm taking it in the direction of the gap. Again, could be bearish or bullish, but the bearish class is what I usually teach once a month the most. So do you have to risk $2,500 in advance risk per trade? No, I think this is a goal for some people to get up to the point if they wanna trade for a living, but you have to start with what you have. It, don't wait until you have you know 100 grand in an account or more to start trading you can build your account up i think it's good to take time and you learn as you go and i do teachings in the room too which is which is very important for people so you can trade with the beginner risk and again there's something called proprietary day trading accounts you can google it online read about them you can go to a retail place or you can go to a prop place but your risk has to be similar to equal in every trade okay so for example, if you have a, let's talk about margin. If you have a $40 stock price, that's 200 shares, you need what, 8,000 in buying power. That's not 8,000 in cash, that's BP. It's buying power and margin. And everyday trader, big traders, professional traders, you know, individual traders like you and me, we, everyone uses margin, okay? No one trades with cash when they're in and out, especially if you're in and out in several minutes or, or in an hour, that would be silly. No reason to do that. This isn't swing trading. This isn't long-term investing. It's your pulling money out of the market on a regular basis, okay? Anyways, you could take a position like that with a $2,500 proprietary day trading account because you get 10 to 1 margin, which means you'd have 25000 in buying power, so you could have taken a 200-share position with a $40 stock brace, just to give you an example. So if the stock moves a dollar in your direction, you can make what? 200 bucks. If you short it at 10 and it drops to 9, that's a dollar, and you have 200 shares, you'd make what? You'd make 200 bucks. Oh, no, you'd make, yeah, you'd make 200 bucks if it dropped a buck. If it dropped two bucks, you'd make 400. So the nice thing is that look at your size of your account, and that will help you determine if you're going to do retail or prop, okay? Some people like prop, you know, even if they have 50 grand, because they get 500,000 in buying power, okay, which they're not going to get at a retail broker unless they have, you know, 125 or more. So you've got to look at what you have, okay, and then determine what works for you. If, if you don't think it works for you to go retail, don't do it. Look into some prop places. There's plenty of plenty of options out there in today's environment to, to trade, okay? And I think that it, the important thing is to look at what you have, and if you have questions about that, you can ask me, okay? I use stops though because I want a fixed risk in everything that I trade. You don't want something running against you, particularly if you're doing it in the one minute chart. So the stop is like the insurance, it protects you. But 200 bucks a day is what? $1,000 a week. And again, sometimes we don't have a trade, but usually we do. You can day trade with a beginner account and risk. The only difference is your share size is smaller, but that's okay, that's fine. I teach beginner people. You can grow a small account into a larger account. And I have people that have larger accounts that are trading with me too for a while. So it's, it it's really depends on your experience and, and how comfortable you feel taking risk. But it's all about teaching you know, yourself how to do something new, which is a process. You come to me, you take the class, you ask me questions. It's a process for you to even ask me questions after the class and in the room because you know, this is all new for a lot of people. What I do with gaps is very, very unique. I created my own system. Nobody else does it. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there that do gaps, but they do them incorrectly, in my opinion. Okay, I'm looking for the institutional money. What I do is very specific. Obviously, 26 points is a lot of things. You think it's a lot and it takes forever, but it really doesn't. Once you learn it, it doesn't take you much more than five minutes to rate a gap. I do get up early, I like to look at things, I like to take my time, and I don't like to rush. The more time I spend in the morning getting ready, the more money I'm gonna make in the live day, and the faster I'm in, the faster I'm out, okay? So, again, many people are looking for direction, 
in their trading, they don't know what to do. This class, my class, the Golden Gap course, gives people direction. It says, get up in the morning, make a watch list of gaps, rate them all, and anything that rates 20 points or more, you're going to trade it in the direction of the gap. Boom, that's it. It gives people the direction they want. Instead, people wait till the open, wait till 10 o'clock, see what the market does, flounder around. Many people can't even read the market right. They're trying to trend trade stuff, which doesn't work either. So, you know, now people are going to those Reddit chat rooms, which is so crazy. I mean, there's just no strategy to anything they're doing there whatsoever at all. There's not even a fundamental or technical strategy to anything that's going in those chat rooms. It's, it's like gambling and people are doing it. And there's more people losing money than making money. And even if you've made money in a chat room like that, I guarantee you're going to lose it eventually and more. It's very dangerous, that type of environment, I think, for people because there's no strategic reason for doing trades. And you have to understand what's going on in the market. Big money controls the market. Institutional money controls the market. Boom, that's it. And that's one of the reasons why I think right now you see this market continuing higher and higher and higher. The SPY almost made new highs on Friday before a holiday weekend. On low volume. I mean, the market is strong, and you, you can't be in denial of it. And there's people short this market, which right now, to be honest, is crazy. So if you'd like to learn my system, it's called the Golden Gap Course. I teach it once a month. This is where you'll learn the meat and potatoes of what I know, the strategy, the 26 points, the entries, the targets, at pretty much you know, what I do on a daily basis when I'm calling the trades in the room. So the Golden Gap course, the next one is June 12th and 13th, 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it because it is online, which is convenient. You can trade the U.S. market from anywhere. Okay, the market though opens at 9.30, and we're mainly doing the trades in the first half an hour, hour of the day. So you got to be there by, I'd say, 9.15 the latest, preferably 9. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. Okay, you must email me for the forms. If you want to do the combo, you save $500 by signing up for the trends class at the same time. This is June 15th, Tuesday, during the week 11 to 3. This is nice to get both the classes and definitely, definitely is helpful, particularly if you want to do options as well and if you want to do long-term investing or swing trading. So think about what I've said. Really, I'm, I'm you know, I try to do my best to break it down. I think I'm a good teacher. Um, I try to explain everything in very detailed ways in the class and then we review everything in the room. You cannot join the live trading room without having done the class. People always ask me that. No, you can't. The room is $500 a month after you take the course, okay, just so you know. But I do think the room is valuable, particularly after the class, to follow along and make money. You don't have to be in the room. There are some people that are in the room. There are some people not in the room. I think right after the class, it's helpful, but you learn everything in the class to do it on your own. You don't have to be in the room, okay? It's a support system. So think about that, too. Any questions, email me at melissa at the stock Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.